Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Megler Makes. Since my last video, I went on vacation to Disney World. After a week of marinating in the Florida heat, merch, and marketing for the Disney Plus series Loki, I remembered that I wanted some Loki horns of my own. Not these. Definitely not these. These little ones worn by Sylvie, the Lady Loki variant. Before I got started with the build, I went back and rewatched the first few episodes of the show. You know, for research. In order to avoid reinventing the wheel, I adapted a helmet pattern I purchased from the good folks at Kamui Cosplay. You'll find a link to it in the description below. Since they had already done the math to make it fit most noggins, all I needed to do was cut off the parts I wasn't using and trace it out onto my phone. For this project, I'm using 5mm EVA foam to make the base of the crown. It's a favorite of cosplayers and school children alike because it's relatively easy to cut. I find that if you have a sharp blade, EVA likes to be cut in clean, straight lines. There's something very satisfying about it too. It's just... What I'm not very good at is cutting beveled edges. After the trauma, I moved on to making the horns themselves. I tried to make some out of foam sheets, but quickly realized that even the smallest pattern I had was much too big for what I needed it for, so I switched over to foam clay. If you've never used foam clay before, it's pretty sticky and feels kind of gross, but it's really great for easily sculpting rough shapes. Now I know what you're thinking, those look like poops. Like literal poops. And that's okay. And it's okay that they're a little bigger than what I really need because I'll be sanding them down to the right size and shape after they've cured. While my poop horns cured, I set about my first attempt at making this little book-like detail in the middle of Sylvie's crown. My first thought was to use the same 5mm foam I used for the base of the crown. I traced out the end of the paper pattern onto some foam and cut it out with the intent of using my wee little dremel to carve down the edges to look like the quote-unquote pages of the book. It worked okay, but it became apparent pretty quickly that my Dremel carving skills need improvement before I can handle fine details like this. The idea was there, but mostly I just chewed up the edges. For a shining moment, I thought I could save it by smoothing a little quick seal into the divots I dug out of the foam. This works pretty well on smaller holes and bubble voids, and if you wet a finger with some water, it smooths out very nicely. Sadly, the damage I had done was too severe to cover or fill. We'll come back to this later. With the foam clay cured, it was time to bust out the wee little dremel again and sand my poop horns into a shape that no longer strongly resembled poop. This is a very messy process, and you will absolutely want to wear safety goggles and a good dust mask to keep the tiny bits of foam out of your eyes and lungs. It helps if you have a vacuum nearby to manage some of the dust as well. After sanding down the lumps and bumps and refining the shape of the unbroken horn, I switched over to a wet-dry sanding sponge to really get it perfect. Once I was happy with the shape, I marked out on the base where I wanted the horns to go. Hindsight being what it is, I realized that I probably should have done a dry fit to see where the horns should sit once the piece is round, instead of marking it out while the piece is laying flat like I did. I then slathered the ends of the horns with some contact cement and let it set up for a hot second. Typically, I blunder through projects without much forethought, but fortunately, not today! Though I had already put glue onto the broken horn, I remembered that I had left it long to this point on purpose so that I could measure out how long I wanted the stubby broken end to be. And then, I just... Each of the horns has a trim around the base, so while the glue was drying, I cut strips of 2mm craft foam and wrapped it around the base of each horn to get the right length. Contact cement is the real hero of this project. It's used for sticking every single piece of the crown together. 
while I'm not opposed to the smell of it, you really do want to make sure you're doing your contact cementing in a well-ventilated area. With the glue and the trim setting up, I moved on to making the structure that will support the shape of the crown and keep it stuck on the old brain box. I'm using a metal headband for this, and cutting strips of foam to form a channel that will secure the headband to the base of the crown. I also included a backing piece to keep the metal from sitting right against my forehead and annoying me when I wear it. With the headband glued up and ready to go, I attached it to the crown itself. One thing I like about EVA foam is that it's very forgiving. In a lot of cases, if you happen to stick your piece down in the wrong spot, you can either easily move it or you can smoosh it and finagle it into close enough to the correct position. With the smooshing and finagling finished, I realized that the book detail in the center of the crown was coming unstuck. I was okay with this, because by this point in the project I had resigned myself to doing what I should have done from the beginning, and remaking the emblem with layers of thinner foam instead of trying to carve it out. Because I liked the overall shape of the original book, I gently pulled the botched one off the crown to use as a template for my new book emblem. I traced the part I liked out onto my 2mm foam and cut it out just like you would a paper heart, folding it in half to cut both sides at the same time. Next, for a change of pace, I thought I'd give the whole working smarter, not harder thing a try. Using my new largest base layer as a guide, I traced it out so that I could make smaller paper templates for each of the smaller pages of the book. Since avoiding using math is pretty much the point of my life after finishing school, I eyeballed out how much to reduce the size of each book page and get the effect I wanted. It probably would have looked better if I took the time to calculate how much to cut down for each layer, but honestly, I'm fine with it. Ain't nobody got time for that. Seriously, math is the worst. With my book pages unbiggened, I then cut each layer out of foam and cemented them together the same way I've glued everything else together on this project. I used a ballpoint pen to scribe in the spine of the book. Finally, with a little trimming, smooshing, and finagling, it was time to attach the book to the crown. I marked out where I wanted the glue to go so that I wouldn't end up with a sticky mess later, and pasted the little book into place. I swear this is the last time you have to watch me apply glue to something in this video. To me, the whole project looked pretty ding dang good at this point, so that brings us to the final steps, priming and painting. Unfortunately, due to user error, I do not have footage of me spraying down the crown with a layer of Plasti Dip followed by gold spray paint, so I guess there's nothing left to do here but roll the glamour shots. Even though there are a few things I'd change, like the position of the horns and the surface texture, I'm still pretty pleased with how this turned out. As the British like to say, I'm chuffed to bits with it, and I think the resemblance to the show prop is remarkable. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can see more stuff that I make when I upload new videos, usually on Fridays. I hope you're having a fabulous day, and thanks for spending part of it with me! Bye!